Here's a quick video from Metalworks' Marketplace this past October with Kate Wolf showing how she uses her precision wax carvers and a flex shaft to make a ring. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kate Wolf from Wolf Tools and I'd like to show you how to turn your flex shaft into a lathe. First off, don't forget your safety glasses. And to set this up, you get a collet, put it in a tweezers, heat it up with a torch, you put the collet in this hole, and quickly slide these together and down. This was set up about an hour ago. You want to wait an hour before you use this. Set this up with a GRS Benchmate. I took out the ring clamp. I put a wolf collar on my number 30 handpiece. This is available separately or it comes with the adjustable trimmer. And I put that in my Benchmate and have my wax rod in here. I slide it as close as I can without it touching and tighten everything up. Your other options are you can buy this Fordham handpiece holder. This just clamps onto your bench and it can spin around. You can work from the side or from the front, which is quite handy. With a, this is either called a bastard file or a rasp, depending on who you talk to. A number 40 flat engraver, a dividers, and the Wolf's Precision Wax Carvers. So let's get started. Nothing about this technique is about muscle. It's all about having something sharp against something that's spinning that is soft. Muscle will only cause you problems. So just have an easy touch but a firm grip on your tools. So at first I'm going to true up this wax rod. I use the whole file. Now what you'll notice is these marks go all the way around, but there's no marks right there. That's the low spot. I have to keep going until I have tool marks all the way around the rod. Almost. And use the entire file. Go all the way up and all the way down. The tang is facing the floor. I'm working behind. I have a firm grip on the file, but I'm not applying a lot of pressure. And now I'll turn it a quarter turn and trim up the end. I'm going to open up my dividers to half the inside diameter of whatever size ring I want to make. And I'll use the corner of the graver with some pressure from my bossy finger and smooth the end out. Now I'm going to feed the dividers just the left leg only. Find the middle, get bossy, pivot it over, and there's the mark for the inside of my ring. The most important part to, thing to realize when you're doing this is I need to keep this tool parallel to the center axis. If I might have my handle low or off to the side, I'm going to have a cone-shaped ring. And I'm going to go in just a few millimeters for the graver to, the, to four o'clock. I need to go deeper than my ring will be wide because I have to cut this off here. Now I'm going to do what I call making donuts. It's a quick way to remove material. Whenever I make a ditch, I make it wider than my tool so I don't melt the wax. So now I'm going to work from looking straight on. Jewelers tend to be like crows, they tend to watch a moving shiny thing. But what we need to do instead is focus on the surface so we can see how the tool is affecting it. Go a little bit thinner. So I'm using the corner of the graver. My graver is at about a 45 degree angle. I have a finger on top of the graver and I'm just shaving some material off. Now I'm going to make a ditch to isolate the shape of the ring, the width of the ring. This is the rounding tool. The end of it is concave. I'm going to use this to make round rail on the edge. This is the diamond point tool. I'm going to use this to make the center into a nice dome, and I'm going to do that by rolling this as I'm cutting and watching the top edge. And 
check the profile one more time. We're going to call this demo OK. I'm going to make this a little lower so I can cut this off soon. And now I can go in from the inside with one of my green tools to hollow out some of the inside. I can actually see the tool through the wax, see where I'm hollowing. I'm a big fan of a comfort fit shank, so I'm going to get my graver and roll it, and that gives me a nice round radius. So now I'm going to cut this off. Get my finger ready to catch it because it will fly. You can see one side looks good, the other side looks a little bit ragged. I'll show you a cool trick to fix the other side. can trim up the edge and take it off. Be sure and visit autofry.com for more information about all the incredible wolf tools that help making jewelry be easier and more efficient. And don't forget to put Metalworks Marketplace on your calendars for October 2019 for your chance to see lots of life-changing jewelry tools in action.